The midsize luxury sedan class is one of the most important segments in the luxury auto market. With the Mercedes-Benz E-Class being the best seller in this segment, the Lexus GS wants some of the sales pie. So is there a reason you should choose the GS over its European competition? Well, let's go ahead and find out and take a closer look at this 2017 Lexus GS 350. Now the GS has been in this generation for quite some time now since around the 2013 model year and it got a pretty extensive refresh just last year which included updated styling and updated features. Not much has changed for 2017 however except for that there is the addition of added standard safety equipment such as adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning and blind spot detection. As far as styling goes for the vehicle it's either love it or hate it in terms of styling just like with the rest of the Lexus model lineup. But I do like it when you get the F-Sports package, which ours doesn't have, and it comes with the black mesh front grille. And you still get the same spindle grille design, but with the black mesh front grille, it just adds a little bit more flair on the front face of the vehicle here. But overall, it's not a bad looking car, and it's one of the better looking mid-size luxury sports sedans. It's more interesting looking than the outgoing model of the BMW 5 Series for sure. Now here goes the key fob design for the GS. You have your lock unlock to release your trunk and then your panic alarm. Now this color is known as the eminent white. You also do have smart key access on the driver's door and the front passenger door here. And you have a beige leather interior. Get the F Sports package and you do get differently designed front seats here. You also do have your power driver's seat and your power climb, power lumbar. All right, now stepping on inside of the GS here. It's a beautifully designed interior. Lots of contrast going on with the, I love the two-toned with the beige and the black. And then I love the wood trim here too. Certainly doesn't look Spartan, which is a good thing. You do have push button ignition. Just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. And what you're hearing there is a three and a half liter V6. You have a full leather wrapped steering wheel. Coming to your transmission, eight speed automatic here with manual shiftability. You can also do it by the shifter down here or via the paddle shifters. When you put the vehicle into reverse, it does tilt down the rear sunshade and then you also do have your rear view camera with guidance signs as well as trajectory. Let's go ahead and turn on the headlights and the hazard. Let's go and check out the exterior of the GS. All windows are fully automatic. Let's go and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators and blind spot detection. Now the GS here is actually slotted up above the ES and slotted below the LS in terms of price. However, the GS and the ES are roughly the same size, but the GS has a sportier nature and then it's rear wheel drive instead of front wheel drive like the ES. You also do have LED headlights with LED daytime running lights and then front parking sensors here. Now powering the GS here is a three and a half liter V6 that runs on premium lighted fuel. And it produces 311 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 280 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPM. With EPA estimates being an okay 20 in the city and 28 on the highway. Now you can go for a wheel-wheel drive or you can go for all-wheel drive with the GS here. And then you can also go for a hybrid model. However, you do pay a pretty hefty price tag up front when you get the hybrid. Now competitors of the GS, you have the vehicles in the mid-size luxury sports sedan class. This includes the likes of the BMW 5 Series, Mercedes-Benz E-Class, Audi A6, and the Cadillac CTS. Total vehicle price for our particular GS is $52,720. EPA estimates, like I said, 20 city, 28 highway. 
Final assembly point for this vehicle is in Toyota, Japan. And the overall vehicle score hasn't been rated yet from the government. Five, four, five star safety ratings. Coming to the rear, you have LED tail lights with some pretty nice looking LED turn signal indicators. And rear parking sensors, dual exhaust tips. All of your basic power necessities, power windows, door locks, power mirrors. We also do have power folding mirrors here. And memory seat settings for three people. I love the stitching on the door panel here. Interior quality in the GS is pretty good. You have soft touch materials that abound everywhere inside this vehicle. And it's certainly pretty competitive for the class. The build fit and finish is excellent and the build quality um, is pretty good for the class. You won't find any panel gaps inside of here and everything feels Pretty sturdy for the most part. Pretty impressed with the interior of the GS here. Coming to the steering wheel design, love the steering wheel here. This is Lexus's newer steering wheel designs. And you have your steering wheel mounted audio controls on the left, and then your voice recognition Bluetooth phone controls. And then over here we have your controls for the LCD screen in the center, which I'll get to in just a minute. And you have your four collision alert as well as your lane departure warning. All that good stuff. Down here dual cup holders and then you'll find your controller for the Lexus inform system which I'll get to in just a minute and right here you have your different driver selectable modes it shows you up here and up on the dash if you're what which mode you're in it shows you if you're in sports mode eco mode and then you have your normal mode too and basically the throttle response as well as the steering feel will change when you switch between the different modes Coming to the center console here, there's plenty of center console storage, and then you have your removable tray, 12 volt power outlet, and a USB charging port, as well as an auxiliary input. You actually have two USB charging ports right there. And then down here, what I always loved about Lexus vehicles is that you have an automatic mode for the heated seats and the ventilated front seats, which is pretty cool. A lot of vehicles don't offer that, but you do have three stage heated seats and ventilated front seats for the driver and the front passenger. Really love this trim right here. Just looks really elegant. Adds a lot of contrast to the interior. The seats in the GS are pretty comfortable. I wouldn't say they're the typical Lexus seats. They're not as plush as I tested in some other Lexuses, but they're pretty comfortable for the most part. I would certainly take a long road trip in this vehicle. The thigh support is okay. There's an okay amount of side bolstering, but when you do get the F Sports package, you do get different seats here. Visibility in the GS is pretty good. Lots of glass area all around. No sloping roof line in the rear really, so that helps out quite a lot. Seeing how the windshield is also pretty easy too. What I love about the GS's interior is that you do have the stitching on the dash. It certainly gives it a much higher quality feel inside of here. Up here, auto dimming rearview mirror with garage home link. And I love the new rearview mirror that they put on Lexus vehicles now. SOS safety connect and LED map lights. As well as your sunroof with your sunroof controls. You can't get a panoramic sunroof in the GS here. However, it is available on the ES, which is quite interesting in my opinion. But I wish they did offer a panoramic sunroof for the GS. You also have your glove box compartment and what felt pretty high quality. And down here you will find your electronic parking brake. Over here, heated steering wheel, your automatic high beams, as well as your traction control off button. All right, now coming to the gauges here, it's a fairly traditional looking setup. On the left, you have your tachometer and the coolant temperature. On the right, you have your speedometer as well as your fuel gauge. And then the center right there shows all of your vehicle information, such as your trip information, your fuel range, eco indicator, which shows you your tire pressure, sway warning. And over here it has your direction of travel, what audio source is playing, and then your safety technologies, which ones are on or off, and then your warning messages for the vehicle, and other settings such as your oil maintenance, scheduled maintenance, and then your tire pressure, all that good stuff. It's a fairly basic 
uh, LCD screen. It's a fairly basic center, information center. However, the rendering and the graphics are okay here. Down here, we also do have dual zone automatic climate control. You have your fan speeds, temperatures. It's a fairly simple and easy to use layout, which I like. You have your front window defroster and your rear window defroster right there too. Now let's get to the main infotainment system in the head unit. Now this is the Lexus M-Form system. We've seen this head unit many times here before. Now coming to your main menu, shows you pretty much everything. Coming to your navigation system, you can enter in your destination by manually putting in the address. You have your points of interest, as well as your destination assist, which you could call a live person and they'll give you directions. Then you have your previous destinations. Now the map quality is okay. It's certainly not the best in the business. It certainly can be a lot better. Uh, BMW, Mercedes, and Audis have Google Earth-like map views. However, Toyota and Lexus just use a fairly basic map here. You do have live traffic and all that good stuff. It does what it needs to do, but there's just nothing too special about it here. It's nothing out of the ordinary. You have your different audio sources, which include AM, FM, XM satellite radio, CD player with your optical disk drive, which a lot of vehicles are actually getting rid of nowadays, and your USB port, your auxiliary input, all that good stuff. And then we also do have your Lexus app suite, which you can access various apps such as iHeartRadio, Pandora through your smartphone data connection. And you have your information, which is for your fuel consumption, weather, traffic incidents, Gives you a little bar graph on the fuel and consumption. And you have your climate, which you can control your climate functions from here if you don't want to do it by the buttons down here. And you have your setup, many different settings that you could change for the Lexus M form system, such as the Bluetooth, the voice recognition, audio. Let's go ahead and test out the voice recognition. Please say a category name. Music. Pardon? Music. Music. Please say a music command. Cancel. Cancel. Voice recognition has been canceled. Sometimes you have to speak a little loud to get it to, get it to uh, recognize your voice. Now, as far as the way the GS drives, the GS has a pretty good balance between decent ride comfort and decent handling. The ride is pretty coddling and pretty quiet, especially at highway speeds. Now, it's not the smoothest ride. It's not as smooth as, say, as the ES, but it's pretty comfortable overall, and it soaks up road bumps fairly well. But the GS is pretty predictable around corners. You can feel for where this vehicle is trying to go, especially when you kick it into sports mode, which is nice. And it tightens up the steering a little bit and, and changes the throttle response. But I wouldn't say it's the best driving vehicle in the midsize luxury sedan class, but it's one of the better driving ones. But I think the GS has a pretty good balance between decent ride comfort and decent handling. The three and a half liter V6 certainly can be a little bit more powerful here, especially for how big this vehicle is. I mean, the IS's three and a half liter V6 has almost a similar amount of power and it's much smaller, but the GS is a much bigger vehicle than the IS here. And the GS, it certainly needs probably a V8 powertrain in the future. I could certainly see the GS having a V8 powertrain. They did offer the a V8 and the GS a couple years ago, but they got rid of it. Right here, you also do have your power rear sunshade. And you also do have your parking sensors button. All right. Now let's go ahead and shut down the GS. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Do have a power trunk lid, which is nice. There's a pretty good amount of trunk space back here and you have your first aid kit. Down here you'll find your spare tire.
So the 2017 Lexus GS350 makes for a pretty good choice for a mid-size luxury sports sedan with its unique styling, its luxurious interior with plenty of interior space, and it's pretty good value. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.